as a kid growing up, there's a bunch of things that you look to for inspiration. Other artists, or athletes, business people, you know, trying to find what it was that kind of made them tick. And hopefully I can learn something. The muse to me is a person that challenges what's ordinary. And through challenging what's ordinary, you wind up inspiring a shitload of people. Man, welcome back. Episode 14, coming to you from New York, where it's cold as shit out here, man. Then How do y'all do it? Lord. Man, my brother Jack, good to see you. Good to see you, my boy. Back man, we got the one and only. Kevin Durant, man. Hey, dude, Appreciate bro. you. Yes, Yo, brody. Good to see you, boy. To. Yes, sir. Appreciate yes, sir. you coming in, man. Yes, uh, out here on the East Coast. You're an East Coast dude. Man, welcome back, man. Yeah. <laughs> You started your career out here, basically, yeah, right? Early, yeah. Let's jump right into it, man. Something that I've always kind of been on your side with because <clears throat> I'm one of these similar type people where social media. I think people think because you can access anybody, you could say anything you fucking want to people. Yeah. And you're someone that, like, I don't give a fuck my status. I, I am him. But if you disrespect me, I'm going to come at you. Tell me your thought process about that platform. I mean, it's really simple. It's not like, uh, I mean, I like Twitter. I mean, shit, if I see something on there that I want to respond to, I'm just going to do it. It's not like a predetermined thing. I just kind of see right. it, scroll on it. I like I liked the platform. And if any chance I get to give somebody a piece of my brain, I want to do it. When you hear people say, like, well, he's Kevin Durant. Why is he this? Why is he that? Like, <clears throat> what is your, what's your response to that? I don't really know what that means. Like. You're just you. Yes. <laughs> like, like, they hold you to a high standard, but they expect all your opinions to be they, the same way that they would think. Exactly. So it's a problem if, it, if, it's, if they disagree with it. Exactly. So, you know, everybody, when you get to this level where you're that good at something, so everybody feel like that, that they can tell you what's best for you. You know what I mean? It's like, even from the team that I want to go to to what I say on Twitter, it's just right. like everybody got to... Everybody feel like they know what's best. Right. I'm like, I, I appreciate y'all, you know, but I got this. They you know yeah, I'm mean? pretty good at being me. Yeah, I'm cool at I'm being pretty good sometimes at Sometimes a motherfucker got to hear it. You know, sometimes you got to be like, motherfucker, can you do it? When was the last time right. you scored a bucket? Exactly. Did you make your oh. church league team, motherfucker? Did they, you, like, you got cut from uh, Boys and Girls Club. Like, stop talking shit. But sometimes I always they gotta say, hear too, that because shit. it's just like, well, he should turn the other shoulder. He's bigger. Like, no one knows how it feels, especially on your level, to have everyone attack a move you made. Yeah. You took your happiness in your own hand. Okay, see, I love you. I appreciate everything that happened. I'm gonna go fuck with these warriors. Yeah. And instantly you become the villain. You know what I mean? So to be able to have the strong enough shoulders to be able to take all the criticism and constant, it, it's still going on. I see it. The slander is ridiculous. You know what I mean? So. I mean, people, me just being me and <clears throat> responding to stuff and <clears throat> interacting with people, I think. The reason why all this shit's still going on, I think the, the, a lot of the media feel like they they bullying me. They want to bully me, and, and they feel like they 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 found a little crack or a crease in in my armor, and they mm -hmm. want to use that against me somehow. Mm -hmm. So they continue to just regurgitate the same old stories, the same mm -hmm. old storylines, and you know, recreate beefs with players that are former Don't teammates. Exist, right? And it's just they blow everything out of proportion. Yeah, I it's see just it. like I see what you're doing, and I and. 
that's the reason why I don't like the media in the uh -huh. first place. Uh, and it's, it's just, if the shoe fits, I'm not just grouping everybody in the same thing, but it's just like, it's a reason why I don't fuck with y'all. Uh, but I know what you're trying to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not slick. And, you know, when I call it out, I, I guess I'm the sensitive guy. So now it, it, it's funny you say that because we're both on the other side now. So we yeah. see it. So yeah. I, I take... I think as a player, we have a major responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I call players on it too. Cause when Perk said that shit, I'm just like, bro, like as former players, you know what this shit yeah. is like. So don't let these motherfuckers hype you up exactly. and just to saying some shit. Exactly. You know what I mean? So and, and we actually got into it a little bit of back and forth because I said I said it on Twitter. He hit me back on this shit, and I knew everyone wanted us to argue. So I DM'd him. Like, Brian got your number, but let's talk about yeah. this. You know what I mean? So, but what I was saying was it's just like. You can give Russ all the props you want, but you ain't got to shit on him in, in, in the process. Exactly. Like, I think today, like, to show love to one, you have to shit on somebody else. Exactly. You know what I mean? To that me, that's what fucks thing. me up. Russell going back to Oklahoma City was a great thing, but you knew that <clears throat> you saying, like, I'm going to announce why Russell is the greatest Thunder player ever. You knew that was a divisive mm -hmm. statement. You mm -hmm. knew that Talk people would, mm -hmm. yeah, you knew people would kind of like, oh, that's a shot at KD. Like, you know that. So my whole thing is like you don't like you said you don't have to do that you don't have to, to in order for you to praise Russell got to shit on me right. because that's what the fans and that's what that's the, what they want the media in Oklahoma City that's what they kind of like made their money off of the last four years mm -hmm. is shitting on me mm -hmm. so like Perk you just playing into that because you want a job and you want some notoriety in your profession but we were friends before this we actually we Jack, actually yeah, played basketball me, yeah. games before this like we I know your family so why are you trying to use that tactic against one of your so-called brothers. So right. that was my whole thing. And then he called me out on Twitter to another fan about us losing in the second round. I'm just like, Kirk, <laughs> you were on the same team with me. And like, you started and you didn't play well. So like, I wouldn't say, well, Perk lost in the second round to Memphis. No, we all did, but don't call out a teammate. Like, we once a teammate, you're always a teammate. Mm -hmm. So like, don't Have let these talk people- sense? Nah, ain't no need, nah. Cause I know what his whole thing is. I know what it's wrapped around. I know it's bigger and deeper than just what he's saying on Twitter or him, you know, trying to prove a point. He got, you know, he, he want to do something in his life. And I get that, but I'm just trying to let people know that I don't really deal with Perk like that. And like, when I when I get asked about him, my stance is like, that's how I would kind of met you through Perk. Yeah. And I'm like, it, that should have been handled a different way. Like, even even if he disagreed or how he felt, he could have called you and y'all could have handled it a different kind of way. That's, when people ask about it, I say both my little brothers, I really don't want to get involved because yeah. they was brothers at one point. They was partners mm -hmm. at one point. It's like you, you know said, what I'm saying? It's deeper. It's, it's deeper, deeper than, than rap. Yeah, it's you deeper know what I mean? Than so, yeah. like, he and I had a chance to talk and we talked out of eye and gave the mutual respect. But, like, to me, as players, that are able to cross over and, and they're letting us in this space right mm -hmm. now, like, I think what makes us amazing is our authenticity. And none of these other motherfuckers have ever been in the locker room and know what it's like to exactly. even lace these motherfuckers up. Exactly. I mean, so we have a certain responsibility to always G code it. Behind the scenes is different. You know what I mean? I've yeah. heard bad experiences. I've seen some experiences. I know what my experience is, and it just kind of is what it is. And the way I look at these is just like, if they want to use me up for my game, I'm going to use that platform like yeah, a motherfucker sure. and, and, sure. and capitalize But at the end of the day, they always got... They are in the control. That's why it's good to have your own media outlet where you control your own narrative. That's because why you got to do You want to tell your motherfucking shit. story, come to all the smoke. Yeah, come to <laughs> death row. Yeah, say you know what you saying? need to right say. Bam, and look at the jacket on your ass. What other podcast got jackets like this? No God one. damn it. Me. Yeah. We out here. All right, man, let's get back on track, man. <laughs> let's, let's talk about where you are right now in, in, in your recovery process. Yeah, uh, man, I'm getting there, man. It's been, I don't even know how many months it's been, but I'm progressing. I'm getting on the court. I'm um, starting some basketball stuff. I'm now. tired of watching you hooping with nuts on doing the games on the court, doing Man. your moves. Yeah, you, his nuts, you said his nuts on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm out there killing that shit. Huh? one on none. <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm working, man. Every single day I'm working. And, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to being, um, you know, back to myself as much as I can. You know, it's a tough ass injury, man. Mm. It's frustrating. Mm. Every day just doing the small shit. You know, I'm a, I just like to, you know, no hose bar, just go hoop. But you gotta prepare, mm -hmm. warm up to warm up mm -hmm. to get ready for right. the next thing. It's just like, for me, somebody who doesn't understand patience when it comes to this shit, it's tough. How's it? How's it? Like, I know you, and I know how much you love the game. Just you know, sitting there and being away from the game, dog. I know that's driving you crazy more than anything. Yeah, it's stressful, man. It is. It is. You know, because I was on a good pace. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. I was playing well. Hurt I mean, you. 12 straight years of doing what I was doing. It was like. You know, I, I, I feel like I feel like I hit Hall of Fame status early in my career, and I, was, nice. I just want to keep adding on to it, and then just get a clean break like that. 
it's definitely stopped momentum, but you know, as always, the marathon not, continues. Yeah, you just you just you yeah. know switch your focus a little bit and and, and redirect your, your yourself and, and see where it goes from there. But I learned mm -hmm. so much uh, in that in that time that I can kind of apply it to this new phase. So yeah, I'm looking forward that's to that's what it. I want to ask you. What have you learned, like sitting there and watching your team, and where you can plug in and, and be your best? I just uh, just just playing in so many different positions with the showing Warriors. Showing up, nigga. Just That's showing it. up. Playing <laughs> yeah, 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 nigga. Yeah, I, I feel I'm like back. I feel yeah. like yeah. seven on the court. I play I play so many different roles with the Warriors. You know, I feel like uh, you know with the Thunder, I was just learning who I was as a player, and learning how to figure, I learned how to score in the NBA, learning how to just make basic reads in the NBA, and then when I got to the Warriors, just like being innovative at real fast. You know how we play, mm -hmm. you know, backdoor cut gonna present itself fast. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure it's there or like we never plan some of that shit. So just learn on the fly like that and just mixing those two, combining those two experiences together and bringing them to the nets. You know, I'm just looking forward to just stepping, like you said, just stepping out on the court and seeing how my presence affects my teammates. You know what I mean? And then seeing how they can put me in positions to be successful moving forward now that I had a tough injury. Your presence is a presence. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm anxious to see that dynamic. Oof. You, DJ, Oof. and Kyrie. We gonna get like, there, we gonna like, get there. Okay, I'm sorry. Ooh, ooh, I just, we, we, gonna, I'm, I'm getting anxious, get my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Take me back to the finals Yeah. last year. And I say sometimes as athletes, we need to be protected from ourselves because at the end of the day, we got that say. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're on the brink of your third straight title, um, finals MVP, the prior two years. Tell me what your mindset was to come back and, and try to help your team get over that hump. I mean, as I started getting healthy, I started, you know, having these pictures in my mind about what it would be like to come back from down 3-1. I know for a fact I wasn't going to get finals MVP, but seeing, you know, Steph be, get that moment, I was looking forward to mm -hmm. that. Or Clay, whoever it was at that time. That was playing, I, was looking for, I was just picturing so much in my mind at that point of just great things happening if I step back on the court. And, you know, it started to turn that way first. Shit. It started <laughs> first quarter. Was <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just like, you know, I could tell, I can tell, you know, when I went back to the bench, the confidence my teammates had, the whole organization. Like, I could look down and see, you know, our fans and, and E-40. And everybody just had a sense of like, man, yeah, we here now. Back. We it's back. Over. It's and over. I knew the fans back in the Bay was just so excited that I was playing again. And, you know, it was just a, a life is crazy. You know, you can be on that high so fast and then in a matter of seconds mm. you go back down. I'm grateful for it is is fucked up that I had to go through it, but I'm also grateful that I can experience it because down the line I can be able to speak on how much it helped me as a player and a person. What was it like once you went down, knowing you're down, and then seeing Clay go down, and then the Raptors winning a championship, knowing that should have been your guys' third in a row? Yeah, it was rough. It was rough because I feel like throughout the season we could have definitely... We could have locked in a little bit earlier for the playoffs, and I feel, and I feel like, and I feel like when we getting down to that moment, it was just like, damn it, it you know, having me and Clay out and not not winning the championship after planning for it so long, it was just like that's just the, that's just how the guys work, that's just how the games work sometimes, and it was just like throughout the regular season, I really wish that we'd have locked in a little bit more, you know what I mean? It's, it had a little bit more game plan, a little bit more focus going into the season. So that like <clears throat> it didn't have to end that way, you know what I'm saying? It's like we waited so long just mm. for that moment mm. instead of like each game was important, you know. Right. Even in the regular season, even in the first round, it's like we waited for so long just for the finals, and it happened that way. It was, it was like it made me think about the whole season as as a whole. That's a gift and a curse, you know what I mean? Because for them, it was a five year run to yeah. know that, yeah. bro, we're gonna be playing till June every year. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's a lot yeah. of basketball. It's a lot. You know what I mean? And so, I didn't realize that until, you know, until we started getting into the playoffs and we played Houston and it was just like, shit, this is the third year of us making this run. It's tough. And so two more years before that, I, I know mentally, you know, draining. it's draining. <clears throat> it's draining, and I got it. But it was like, shit, it's right in our hands. It's, it, it's right there for us to get a three-peat. It hasn't happened in a while. So, you know, it's that, it that point where I was like, let's just fucking lock in and do it. Take me back to Oklahoma City, up 3-1, mm -hmm. losing the series, Warriors <clears throat> coming back and beating you guys, and then is where all the brunt of this, I feel like, happened. People were mad that you were up 3-1, 
bounce, took your career and your own and your happiness and your losers, own hands. Only losers didn't understand that. Yeah. yeah, which you're fucking supposed to because it's a business when they cut, trade, wave, whatever, it's a business. But when we do it, it's a problem. Yeah. You take that to the West Coast. Tell me what that transition period was like where you were the motherfucking beloved. You were the next coming of who, you mean, like you said, you're, you're, you reached Hall of Fame status early. You were on the yeah. way. So and people like, like me, like people genuinely They really fuck, fuck with you, with you. love you. And then, then in a matter of and moments, overnight changing. And it was, see, the Warriors were so intriguing because I always, and with OKC, we play with, I play with a lot of athletes. I didn't play with a lot of skill guys, not like shooters, ball handlers. So after a while, my game started to grow. I was like, I need a change. This is before the season even started. You know what I mean? And it was like, I'm going to play out my last season as hard as I can. And, and I'm not telling anybody I want to leave. I'm not packing in. I'm trying to win as much as we can and trying to end this out right. That was my thinking going in before the year. And obviously, I had a few teams, but the Warriors is a team I wanted to play for because, you know, the movement they had, the passing, they led the league in assists. And when Scott Brooks is my coach, that's all we talked about is wanting to lead the league in assists. And so playing with, you know, that team, that's what I was thinking about. So when we got to the playoffs, it was just like, you know, let's see what happens. We got a young team. We beat San Antonio in six. Like, that's a, that's a great mm. win. Mm. That's a great win against a team that had been running through people all season. And, you know, Russell had to make big shots. I had to make big shots. Andre Robeson came alive. Deion Waiter started to play well. So I'm like, all right, we get some momentum. And this canter was coming on. Then we get to the Warriors. It's just a whole different series. You know they're going to sell out to stop me. Meaning they're going to leave Andre Robeson. Anybody but you. I would Anybody too. Anybody but me. I would leave Andre Robeson too. And I'm just like. He couldn't hit a house if he was in the kitchen. <laughs> What you mean? I'll leave his ass he was a too. It was he was a he was great for our team in that series because he can guard, but he he knew that he wasn't gonna help us shooting threes, mm -hmm. and everybody in the world knew that. So and it's easy for for a team to guard us when we got guys that not gonna not respect handicap. it from the three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was tired of playing in that system. I was tired of like having to be the only guy that can make threes, yeah. make jump shots, and consistently make them. So. My mind was already thinking about how can I develop my game more so than like the Warriors versus Thunder, that rivalry. Like even if that was a rivalry, I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to keep developing my game. And, and on top of that, we only played them one time in the playoffs. So I didn't really feel like a genuine deep hate mm -hmm. for right. the Warriors. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was just like they're a new fresh team. They on the rise. I fuck with them. And I'm going to play hard against them. I know some of their players. It is what it is. It's like. San Antonio those years when you was on the team, I didn't like y'all. Yeah, that was a rival. Yeah, Memphis when we played them, uh, I, I didn't like Memphis at all. Like, those are the teams we've seen every year in the playoffs. The Warriors, they were just like another team to me. So me going there and playing for them, it didn't matter if we would have won or lost the series, I wanted to play there and live in the Bay. Yes, sir. The Bay is it's like nothing else. I mean, the fans, the opportunity, yes. the, the love they show. I mean, they still love you to death. Man, it's like a different culture. It's not like, it don't even feel like you, like, in California, the Bay is just like its, it's own, own thing. place. Like, yeah. I can't even explain it. And it's just like being there, I really felt, I really felt like I stamped myself as a, as a legend in the Bay. I mean, like, you look at, I'm not comparing myself to these guys, but guys that won in the Bay, like Jerry Rice and Joe Montana. Mm -hmm. Now you got the us historical. That won, yeah, it won back to back in the Bay. It's like shit. Come on, man. Forever. Yeah, that's forever. forever. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. But tell me what it's like when you go there because we were there with one culture and I got a chance to go back and see that culture and it was insane. Just the, the, the wanting to be there, the, the, the energy starting at the top with new ownership. You didn't see the old ownership, but the new ownership and just the energy and how those guys all fucked with, you, yeah, fucked yeah. with each other. And then it, the chemistry carried on and off the court. Tell me what it's like being involved in that. When I first came into the league, the Warriors were like a laughing stock almost. You know what I'm saying? Until y'all came around and made and, and beat the uh, Mavs. You know what I'm saying? It was just like that team, that team was... Like, all right, that's what the that's what Oakland is about. You know what I'm saying? Grit. Yeah, yeah that grit and that grind with guys that are on the basketball court that can play any position, that played like us, before us, really. But, you know, four or five small players, you know, switching everything, shooting it's hooping. trees, just hooping. hooping. Like playing playing real backdoor backyard basketball. But like once that team was done, it was like in between then it was just like, ah, the Warriors. What is it? Yeah, What's what is it? What's the identity? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So that first year I got into the league, and then right after that, four or five years after that, then to have our identity and then to see the new ownership and then the build around Stephen Clay 
just their personas and just their stories and how their dads played in the league. And it just, it just, it just changed from like, we got some inner city kids who tough as hell, who 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 uh, personify what Oakland is about to like some guys that are just totally different, came up different. It was, it's two totally different fields, but the game of basketball felt like it was the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was it was just how we came up. You know how you came up, how you came up in the struggle and 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 grinding to get to your position, not being drafted early. Like people felt that. You know, that felt like it was every guy on the team, from Monte to was Azubuki on that team? Yep, mm-hmm. Azubuki. It yeah. was so many guys Petrus, on that team. Everybody, Petrus, yeah. like everybody was just like some cast oh. offs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they just threw together and then you come with a more structured environment with Steph and Clay and Draymond. They got drafted and groomed. It was just like, it was just like night and day off the court, but and, and their stories. But once you you looked at the games, it felt like shit, we played the same way y'all did. Mm-hmm. And we got it from y'all basically. Y'all just had some. MVP, motherfuckers, amazing more. motherfuckers, yeah, y'all had some. They said, Jack points. said, we played, we played the same way. The motherfuckers just made more threes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they made more threes. They just made more shots. You know, <laughs> so what? You guys are going, you win, and like I said, understanding and being around and and and, and knowing Draymond. When that shit happened in LA, I'm like, yeah, damn, like I understand him because he's wears his heart on the sleeve, always speaks from the cuff, and most of the time it's right. You know what I mean? But the shit he said was yeah. over the motherfucking line. It was you know out of line. So how did that happen? How did run me through that? I mean, it really came out of nowhere. I didn't. I mean, we the play happened. I was going to grab a rebound. He came and grabbed it. I'm thinking he going to just toss it to me, and we run up court, and I'm gonna shoot the shot. The whole world thinking that, not just you. Like, <laughs> Everybody thinking. Like, that. Come off the pill, my nigga. I fuck with you, but come off the rock right there. Everybody in the world knew you were supposed to come off the yeah, rock. Yeah, everybody knew that, and we all figured that that would happen. And then when it didn't, I was kind of shocked. And then I was just like, "Oh, Dre, like, let me see that." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what you doing? Then he turned it over. I'm like, I'm just so confused at that point because he never ever did nothing like that before, and everybody on the bench was confused too. And then we came back. Then I just heard him screaming, and I was like, hold up. And he usually screaming when he come back to the bench, but what is he saying? Then he started going off, and I'm just like, maybe it's because I was like fucking pissed that he didn't give me the rock. Because I didn't say nothing, it was just in my body language. I was just clapping and just but, like, but For your defense, Clay had Clay was pissed too. Clay was look pissed at the video, too. Clay pissed too. Like, throw one of us the rock. Yeah. You know you can't hit a house in the kitchen either. Yeah, Get exactly. Get one of us the rock and let us shoot the bitch. So, man, then he started coming off the top with all of that stuff, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, Draymond was a- is actually my friend. Like, he's somebody I can call when I'm going through anything. Like, yo, bro, great, come, great dude. come through. Like, great damn, dude. bro, let's hang out tonight. Like, and for him to say that type of shit to me, it just threw me for a loop, and it just really, I just started isolating myself after that because I didn't feel like, you know, they suspended Draymond, but it was just like, they had to so it won't look bad to everybody else. It, and then nobody talked to me about it or really like, we never really came to an agreement that, it, it, we didn't even we didn't even voice our, nobody as a whole, because it happened in front of the whole team and nobody really talked about it. It was just swept under the rug. And to me, it's just like, we a family. We supposed to like, even if he said that, we can move past it, but right. let's all talk about it. Let's just say how we all felt about that moment, because that's a huge moment in this whole dynasty. Like, you know what I mean? Don't just sweep it under the rug because we want to win. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why we're not going to win. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I was like, let's just all talk about this. It's not that big of a deal. Like, just put it out on the table. We can move past it. And when that did happen, I was just like, fuck it. Let me just hoop and worry about myself. And we went on. Well, see, that, I think that probably hurt y'all. Because if y'all would have came out and he would have heard more people saying, bro, you should have passed the ball. Bro, you should have passed yeah. the ball. I think he would have came outside himself and realized, like, you know what? Maybe I overreacted. Yeah, it was. But he never got a chance to say that. Yeah, I mean, Draymond, we all know what Draymond is. And it's like, it's not, it's fine that you can, that you want to do that, that you want to show your emotions and wear them on your sleeve. That's fine. But when it's over the line sometimes, let's just yeah. talk about it. So next time you can you tone it down just a bit. And I feel like we didn't have the opportunity to do so because we were so focused on trying to just move forward and win. Right. And I get that too, but it's like, if we're a family and we- We gonna hash it out and then we gonna move forward yeah, and win. Yeah, right. we didn't won two chips together. Right. Bigger than like, right. this ain't, this is just right. some, this some shit we can sit down yeah. and talk about. Well, that's but why certain said- words gonna come out too. Like, we brothers and I, I got into, I got in fist fights with my brothers, but certain words you don't say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Certain words you don't mm-hmm. say, you know when that line is crossed. Yeah. Well, I think he certain realized that too. I mean, I, I, like I said, I think us knowing, we we all know him. I think he realized he fucked up, he had crossed yeah. the line, but that's what kind of duty is. But that even makes the point more like, 
Let's motherfucking sit down, have yeah. a drink, and really talk about this. All me, of us. Me and him sat down and talked about it, <clears throat> and we kind of, you know, I, I gave him my piece on it, and he, t he told me how he felt on it. But I'm like, it happened in front of the whole team. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. So everybody got but, to talk about it. Because this. everybody fucked with each other. It wasn't like he was yeah. forcing it. Everybody really fucked with each yeah. other. You yeah. know what I mean? So let's sit down and hash that and out. And then again, everybody was thinking you was <laughs> passing the rock, <laughs> bro. It ain't just KD. It ain't just Clay. Everybody in the world yeah. thought you was coming mm -hmm. off the rock. Yes. Yeah. And you was wrong. Just admit you was wrong. That's, and, that's, and, when, that, and that's the whole thing. I think, I think that he had too much pride in the fact that he turned it over, and that made him react that way. Yeah, but we know shit. Turnovers happen. Exactly. And shit happens. And that's how you're going to make the right play. And he the best play. playmakers on the team. Nobody right. really cared if we won or lost that game in the first place. It was just like, it, right. we, I mean, we in that situation, let's just go ahead and try to finish it the right way. You yeah. know, but at the end of the day, nobody really cared about that win or loss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this too, great coaches, when you don't get a shot at the end of the game like that, they be pissed. Greg Popovich, he'll he'll sit your ass down the whole game if you fuck up a play coming out of timeout and don't get a shot up at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean shit, that'd make anybody pissed. Yeah, that's if, if you just turn it over at the end of a game. I think the media kind of saw that as an entryway to kind of start dividing the, these Definitely. motherfuckers are so good. What can we start doing? What can we start developing to, yep. to chink this armor? Most definitely. And I got it. Like, I was only there with y'all for three months, but I always saw, to me, when I looked like it, I was like, this is, this is some cold shit, man. The media is cold, man. If you pay attention to these motherfuckers, they're really cold. telling you what they're doing right in front of your face, but you can't do nothing because they glamour that shit up and put a bow on it. Yep. It was always, to me, KD and the Warriors. It was never the, the Warriors. Kevin Durant's a part of that team. And I was looking at it, I was like, hold up. So uh, D. West came the same time I came, but he's a warrior and I'm not. <laughs> makes no sense. JaVale McGee, same way. Like, yeah. he's a war. Like, Ian Clark, he was there before me, but he left. Yeah. He didn't win the second championship with us, but he's a Like, it didn't make no sense to me. And I'm like, the media is just trying so hard to separate this thing. And I was just like, yeah, for what? Like, you didn't do that with LeBron and, and, and D-Wade and Bob. Like, you didn't do no. that with those guys. You didn't do that with KG and, and Paul Pierce. And you didn't try to separate them. It's like, oh, why, is it, why are you trying to separate me from the rest of the team? Mm -hmm. And you actually are making this your job, your duty to do so, is to push this narrative every day. People call me wild for calling it out. But I'm just like, no, I think it's corny. It is what it is. The fact you speak on it makes you, like you said, the fact you speak on the bullshit and you see it, you're bad. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, I'm the just The fact that you're this fans. person, you're yeah. just, I'm just supposed to, uh, yeah, I'm one of the greatest players ever to play. I'm just supposed to let it go. That's exactly. what you want me to do? Because y'all supposed to be messengers to the fans and they looking at y'all and y'all can easily like brainwash people yeah. with y'all bullshit. And it's not about you. Yeah. If you're a media guy, nobody cares about you. Real talk. It's not about you. It's about Take what you see Take the ego the out of it. Yeah. Take so, the ego like, out of you're it. You're trying to put your whole style and flair on something that got nothing to do with you. This game going to be here. Bef this game was here before you. It's going to be here way after you. So nobody cares about you. Cool. They don't care about me that much in 40 years, 50 years. They're going to look for the next thing. You know Who's what I'm next? saying? So like... Get out the way. That's why it's so important now, because you think back in the day, pre-social media, whatever they put out is the truth. And yep. we never had a platform. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's why I love it when you're out here. I didn't like to use a burner phone. I would have said, fuck it. I'm Kevin Durant, motherfucker. I'm going to cuss you out. You talk some shit. I'm going to talk some shit. I'm going to speak my mind. You I'm know still I mean? going to do the burner thing. I'm still going to do that. <laughs> you still on it? Yeah. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> <laughs> I, There's some shit that you just gotta but be I'm like, saying, these, these folks are always hey, But I'm saying, way. fuck it, bro. I'm saying, if I'm you, like, you know if you come for me, I'm coming back and, oh, with yeah, you. For sure. Certain people, I'm gonna come back on my regular account. But if I'm gonna try and do my thing, hey, I'm so, like, hey, get look out. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, look yeah, out. Yeah, hey, yeah, I got yeah. the burning. It's yeah, still yeah. out there. Hey, yeah. It's lurking. <laughs> it's, I just slipped up that one time. <laughs> you know why I slipped up. What's the lookout? You know what I mean? So talk to me about <laughs> when you, when did you know that your time in Golden State was up? I mean, I knew, I knew just about halfway point through the year. I mean, I just, I could feel, the, I could feel like, you know, it was a separation between the two. It just felt like everybody was just waiting on me to make a decision on free agency, even, you know, from the coaches to my teammates to the media to it's like there was a narrative was like, throughout the season KD, like what what you gonna do it's like january and i'm like yo i'm just trying to hoop that's all i want to do is play basketball every day i came in every single day and kept my head down i didn't say much i wasn't too excited about much so my coaches and my teammates thought something was wrong with me but i was just like mm -hmm. i'm really focused on the end goal which is to win the third championship in a row and my methods may not like 
be welcoming to other people, but it's just how I do things, you know what I'm saying? How I approach the game. And But for the most part, I really enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the game of basketball, a lot about teamwork and camaraderie that I didn't know. I learned about coaching. I learned about... We were building a new arena. I learned about the business side of the mm-hmm. game. Like, having dinners with Rick Welts was, like, fucking phenomenal to me. Like, me and Bob were like this. We still like this to this day. The respect that I got for Steph and Clay, like, we're going to be... I'm going to one day be fucking playing golf with Steph at some point in my life, talking about <laughs> these three years and, like, that that run that we had in the Bay. Like, and I, I'm, I'm not the one to, like, hold a grudge or be mad or just or not even talk about what we did, it's going to always be on the topic of conversation. Everything I learned in Golden State is always going to be at the top of my mind when I'm talking basketball. No matter if I play there or not, I just happen to want to play for another team. That just is what it is. Did you ever consider anywhere else? Uh, Not really. I looked at other places. Like, like who? The Clippers. And, I mean, I took a peek at the Knicks, you know, like, just because, you know, just to do my due diligence. But, like, I really wanted to play for the black and white. I like the brand. I like Brooklyn was a new up-and-coming city that needed some new flair, uh, you know, new basketball injection. Because being in Oklahoma City, I know that was like having a, a new franchise around. So, I'm like, I, I, you know, I was excited about hopefully doing something like that again in Brooklyn, you know, with the new team playing with Kyrie Irving, who's from Jersey and got that tie with the Jersey side of things. So I'm like, we could bring Coming in so home. many fans. Coming like, home. yeah, it's like, we got a we, we had a solid thing going, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Sean Marks, who was a young GM, up and coming, young team that has some experience a little bit in the playoffs. It just kind of all worked out. And then having a couple trainers and, and you know how that goes, coaches that I work with in OKC, work with, you know, throughout my time in the league, they just all, you know, felt like they migrated to the Nets and, you know, it was it right just, time. Yeah, it right just time. it just felt like it was perfect. Talk about how the, it came about to become with Kyrie, and then to have DJ join you. How did that? How was that orchestrated? Having conversations with Kyrie for the last two years, you know, not even about playing together, but just just brothers. Yeah, just brothers, and you know, uh, we didn't plan on playing together. We played each other in a couple, my second year with the Warriors, and we had a mutual friend and we had some wine together and we just bonded on just life in general and, and basketball in general and that's just formed. And over time, his situation, he didn't like what his situation was at and me either in Golden State and he's just like, hey man, let's just see how this will work. Let's try it out. And DJ wanted to play with us to be, you know, he wanted to, you know, I just play, be, a, be that center for us that can kind of hold it down and, you know, play for something really, play for, a team that's going somewhere, not just keep moving around and bouncing mm-hmm. around the league. So we knew it'd be a vital piece for us going forward, not even just as a star, but, you know, you know, a good being team. Being a part of the team. Yeah, just being a part of the team. So right. it just worked out. Talk about your relationship with Kyrie. Like, uh, as far as what you think you guys will be on the court. I mean, you have, like, people don't understand how important chemistry is. So like yeah. you said, you're developing that real friendship already. So then when you go, like, Jack was my brother, so on the yeah. court, I'm going to run through a motherfucking wall for him. Yeah. So to know what you have off the court, imagine what it's going to be like on the court. Yeah, man, that's the thing. I mean, we we both want to challenge each other. You know, we don't agree on everything. You know You're what not saying? supposed to. Yeah, exactly. You know how brothers are. It's like, when I see him out there, I feel like he could be doing more. I'm going to let him know when he feel like, nah, kid, okay, you don't know what I, what I see and feel out there. I understand that too. But my thing with Kyrie is just, I'm just going to let him be who he is. He's a pure artist of the game. And he's proven himself on the biggest stage. And in my opinion, made the biggest shot of all time. So for somebody like that, I can't tell him what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just going to kind of work with him and see how we can come together and make this thing work for the whole group. But he's somebody that can control and take over a game. And, Incredible. And with Incredible. the ease of just about anybody who's ever played. So a lot of people want to talk about who he is, at his mentality, but if you just watch him on the basketball court, it, you can't deny it makes you feel mm-hmm. while you watch him play. Now, knowing that you're growing as a player, growing in your mentality, your approach, when you hear him say that, 
off the wall shit, even though what he, some of what he said is true, to me, I think you take that to management. But when you put yeah. it to the media and you let the media start cracking and doing what the media does, what were your thoughts on that being an older player seeing that now? You know, but you know him though. Like, you know him, so yeah. you know exactly what it's he means. It's coming from a good place. You know what I mean? You have to be in that type yeah. of shit Come on, to man. know exactly what he's saying. It's not malicious. Because I done been around a team where I done dealt with some bullshit ass motherfuckers on my team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and sometimes they don't understand what the coach's saying. So sometimes you got to either belittle them in the media or, or, or just attack them personally. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you want to win, or just be sorry to them all for it. I, 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 just think, I just think Kyrie just, I mean, I didn't care. I don't think anybody on our team did. I mean, yeah, it that's wasn't, what I want to know. Where people I said like, that. oh I, man, I, said, yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody cared. Like man, like because everybody see what who Kyrie is. Every that's a day. challenge to me. Yeah, like it's yeah, a that, if, Take if that anything, shit as a challenge. yeah, if anything, I'm sure they looked at it that way. But we know Kyrie, so every day when he comes in, like he doesn't, he doesn't look to. He's not a dick in in the locker room. Like he's right. just a he a, he a solid Sorry. ass teammate. He's not doing too much. He not he doing just enough as a teammate. Mm-hmm. So with him saying that, it's just like he care about what his group is going. That's how I looked at it. Mm-hmm. And our teammates, you know, all the, everybody on the team, we just just kept it pushing because we know what the media is about. Mm-hmm. We know people just don't like Kyrie as a person. Point <laughs> <laughs> blank. So whatever he says is going to be blown up, and it's going to look like he's being a bad teammate because that's his his rap. We get it. We know it's not like it's not like you saying something that that's new. Like, oh, Kyrie's a shitty teammate. Of course, you're gonna say that, but mm-hmm. I don't. We don't see that. I don't see that. I don't well, see well, that nobody's before. never heard one of his teammates no, say that publicly. Never. Not one. Never. It's just his methods and how he talks to it's the different. media is different than different. the rest of the guys in the league. And you can't. I mean, like I said, the media got such a huge platform that they can pretty much brainwash people to thinking Kyrie is a horrible person because he does, they don't like how he talks to them. But like I said, it ain't about y'all. Right. What's the vibe and the relationship like with the young Levert, Dinwiddie, Harris, all yeah. good, young, talented dudes? You guys got Levert. some talent. Huh? Yeah. Levert. Yeah. I'm just thinking the same group. Levert, we call him Levert. But, I mean, we, at this point, these guys understand what is, what is what's, what's coming. Right, what the expectations are for us as a group. We having the championship mentality. I'm not saying we guaranteeing no chip, but we're gonna get there easy. But we know when we step on that court, our, you know, uh, we gotta come with that DNA. Every play has to be championship mentality. Every movement that we make, every scout report that we go over has to be looked at as, as if it's a championship mentality. Process. It's a process. And we know how tough that is every single day. So I think everybody on our team is getting used to that. And at the same time, we're struggling sometimes, and we, and we have our ups and downs. But I think all these young dudes getting some great experience. I don't want to call them all these. All our all my teammates are great, getting a great experience, and and knowing what it's like to have two guys that can that are just waiting. You know, especially me. You know, coming not playing like they know that once I get out on the court, mm. things are going to start to. It's going to be some you know, shit. Pe- yeah, people are going to be started putting it, be in their right positions. We're going to start to figure out what the team looks like. So I think everybody's just patient. The, the, I'm getting out of patience, but I'm being patient too. <laughs> I can't wait to see yeah. you, DJ, and Kyrie together, how that dynamic. I just, I just think, you know, I've always, anytime I see it, I think the a play of a certain play with a pick and roll with you and DJ, and he rolling, you coming out the corner. How yeah. can you guard that? Unstoppable. Yeah. That's how Brad and Knight. How can you how, guard that? That's how Brad and Knight died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? At the same time, that's how, that's how Brad and Knight died. How hey, you if you that? see that now that we're talking about this, so I was the dude in the corner. So just imagine this. You was in the, the game, corner, right? I was in the corner. So Brandon Knight came off me to try to stop. And if you see me, I'm in the bottom left corner. I jump up and down, cover my face, and I take off running. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to be a witness Yo. to this murder, bro. These cops are not about to question me about what this motherfucker just did to that man. It was the sickest that was, dunk that was crazy. I've that gotta ever be the seen. Best dunk ever. ever. Yeah, that has to be. Ever. I mean, Braun got Jason Terry, and that was fucked up, too. That was sh- bad, His too. shoulder blades hit first. But he <laughs> baptized... Yeah, they both of their feet Knight. was in the... Yeah, Brandon Knight, his, his legs was in the air after that with, like... DJ came out of nowhere. He's a freak fucking athlete, bro. So, I mean, you, you know, I mean, super strong. He's a perfect, like you said, plug and play dude. He's going to yeah. play his role. He talks on defense, ultimate teammate, funny, good dude. Yeah. Thinks he's a black hippie. Yeah. Like, he fits in perfect. So, I'm excited to see. Like you said, we got to be patient. That's you know, special, coming man. next year, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, man. Uh, tell me what it's like. You, are, you know, you're an East Coast dude. Tell me what it's like to be in, in, in a big city now in New York and, and, 
and living and, and business and just the energy that you that is around this city. That's as different. And these big ass rats. <laughs> I seen it, man. I've, I, well, I know you seen one of them. Man, what this motherfuckers? It's huge. definitely different. I like being here. I actually love it because it's 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 so much going on and it's just so fast paced. You know, coming from California the last few years, and then yeah. Oklahoma for eight years. That's because everybody in California is high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's nonstop energy here. I like getting up and going outside and seeing so many people moving around and getting to somewhere. You know what I mean? It, yeah. So it's dope being here. What have you been doing? I mean, you got a lot of goddamn off time now. Like, what man. are you doing off the court outside of rehabbing your ass off? That's, Making some dope ass shoes. Man, that's about it. That's really what I've been that I need. on. We're going to get to right, the bank. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it ain't time. I've seen that segment. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just been. I mean, I hang out with friends. Just you know, it's 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 like living it, living the city life. I guess you know you, what you doing around the corner? I'm pulling up to go grab something to eat, go have a drink, go to the bar. Like it's just the city life. I guess you know. I've just been. You ran into any bad celebrity chicks out here yet? No, nah, not shit. Sure. I need to come out. We need to, we, we need to stroll around a little not bit. Sure. <laughs> you might be. I'm with KD. Not Ain't sure. nobody I can get out and not get with a KD. Not shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about the, the, the you know, the pissed off Knicks fans that you didn't, everyone thought, like, imagine KD going to the Knicks, doing this, this, and this, but you yeah, took the other route. Him, everybody. You know what I mean? You took the other route. So what do you that think about the fans there. that just, like... That's the media like hyping that shit up, man. I, I, I never came out and said anything about me wanting to play for the Knicks, mm -hmm. ever. That was paid advertising. Ever. That was, was a, paid advertising. They, really they was paying the papers to say that Sales shit, man. Ploy. We know how it go now. I, me, I never said, and then when we came here last year, they had the <coughs> billboards up and somebody asked me about it and I wasn't too excited about it because I didn't like, I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't I got something against the Knicks. I just didn't like all that attention when I was playing for another team. So, like, I never really was big on that New York thing. It was just everybody else, you know, the media and the fans and obviously the New York Knicks fans and, you know, they wanted a, a superstar to come play for them finally, but I never promised anybody I was playing for the Knicks. It was just all these stories that people like to read. So if they pissed off, it's just you shouldn't be pissed off at me. It's just the people that you know, the shit mm -hmm. that you read and those people who wrote that shit, they hyped you up. It's easy. It's, it's <laughs> easy to be mad. Yeah. Let's let's go back to the beginning uh, of your career with you, Russ, and James. Lord, that mercy. Oh, fucking believable. Tell me what that was like when y'all first kind of finally came together and started clicking. I mean, we didn't get enough time. I mean, who knows? Who knows who we could have been? How long did all three of you guys play together? Three years. Long enough to ruin my second ring. Oh, yeah. Because y'all was supposed to get that one. That was supposed to be the first Miami. We got, we got up 2-0 on y'all. And yeah, something clicked we, and you yeah, and Rush is... Uh, no, James. Up. James, too. James the one. On the road. Because me and Russ already had us. We had a cook when we was down 2-0, but James came along after that, and then we started switching all y'all shit, taking y'all out of all y'all shit then. And Tony Parker wanted to save the day and fuck the whole shit off, as usual. Tony Parker had 20 and 10 in the first half in game six. How many turnovers he had the And then after games? that, he was done. He was trying to get the MVP. And then that's when you didn't even miss a shot in game six. And then couldn't get the pill after that. <laughs> couldn't get the rock in six. Like, six couldn't get the rock. And then, and then, then this is what I remember. Not only was I wasn't getting the rock, he was killing, and mom's was over there in my ear the whole game. His mom was talking shit. Kill him, Kevin! Kill him! Talking bad to me, Ooh. too. You know, mom's my that's, game, that's family. That's trying, trying to make that you game, blacker you, than you already are? Tough. Yes. <laughs> yes, she was Talk your motherfucking ass. Huh? Get his ass. Yo, if we'd have lost that game, that would have been tough beating y'all at home, game seven. That's what we was trying to at least get to game seven. Y'all had us up 17 in the first half. I'm like, oh shit, we might not get to the finals. We fucking around. But when we, I mean, that team, we were so young and dynamic. And we, right when we hit our, like, are starting to get to our peak, we trade James. So we didn't really get a chance to, to see how, how good we'd have got because that next year we was hungry. We was hungry to get back to that chip. Like, we didn't care about nothing else but getting back to that chip. And that's in preseason, like, we were, you know, the first few training camp practices, you could tell it was a different energy. And then, boom. James all it took James. was y'all not to sign one of them big men. Y'all could have kept James. No, all it took for us is just sign him. <laughs> just, like just, just kept everybody and just give his motherfucking money. Cause you knew we was gonna at least you knew we was gonna at least get back. At least at least make it a rivalry with the Heat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and then after, and then when Ada fizzled out, then it was your time. Come. Right. It was your time. What's your relationship like 
with these guys now. You know what I mean? They wanted to make it so much. You and Russ didn't get along. James yeah. is gone. You left. Russ is like, what's the relationship like with you guys, though? Because I'm sure it's different than what everyone thinks. Me and Russ? Just oh. both of those, yeah. Se separately? Oh, man, it's cool. I mean, it's it's not like it used to be like when we were, you know, talked every Brothers, day. Uh -huh. or, yeah, I mean, it's, it's more professionals now. These dudes got their own lives. They got family. They got kids. Well, Russ got kids. I don't know about James. <laughs> Maybe a couple but, he might not. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, everybody living their separate lives, man. They, you know, you're dealing with real three live, three stars in the league. You right. know, their own brands. These guys are traveling all summer. MVPs. You know, yeah, MVPs. So it's like we're going to all go our separate ways, but it's always respect because... We, we know it was like when we all didn't have this notoriety. We didn't have this type of, you know, accolades in the game. We was around each other when it was. We really had nothing in it as NBA players. We had to start from scratch. So it's it's fun seeing, seeing how how big we all made this made this thing. You know what I'm saying? Because we envisioned that as youngsters. That's dope. And and that's what I was about to say. That I said one thing y'all do have in common is y'all all know what it takes to be great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I always keep y'all yeah. with that respect I mean, for each you other. think about three court and then they all went on to be MVP. Like, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. You know, you know that's what I mean? Like, and they all started, you know what I mean? Like, what if? Yeah. What if? Yeah. That's just imagine saying, switch, switch. Oh, damn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> switch it, switch again. I need a switch. Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, I mean, you getting switched on to three of the best scores. But the thing is, with James, though, and Russ, they would eventually have to figure out how James could be a starter because we struggled when James started for us. I remember when we played jaw one time and um, James started. Russ, James, and me were uh, one, two, and three, and it just didn't work. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? It was better when James had the command of the second unit. So eventually we had to figure out if we, if James would become a starter, or if he was going to stand at Ginobili Road, which was way too small for him, right? Yeah, he, nah, he obviously, way, <laughs> more way more time out right. on the court, right. way more, you know, way more control of the shit. So who knows how that'll mm -hmm. work? You know what I mean? But it, it worked out perfectly, and perfectly individually for us all. That's what it's about. If you take a look in your career, man, you've played with some of the greatest point guards ever. Yeah, Russ, Steph. You're going to play Kyrie. with Kyrie. Talk about that, James. Uh, you can play James, him in there. right? Yeah. I mean, lead guards is just something I always gravitated towards, even as a kid. You know, my best friend on the team was a point guard. Every stop, you know, from middle school to high school, you know, me and Taiwan Lawson were like this, you know what I'm saying? Roommates everywhere, you know? Me and DJ Augustine are still brothers to this day. So always, oh like, God. as a scorer, you know, somebody that's going to give you that pill. Always, come on, homie, come fuck come with on, me. Come on, man, yeah. like, yeah, right. we homies from day one. So I always, I always enjoyed lead guards, and I always felt like I wanted to play like them. You know, I wanted to, At seven be able feet. to Yeah, I wanted to be able to go through the lane like Russ and boom. Oh, you know, I took stuff from him. Steph, obviously, the way how quick he shoots the three and his handling, him get to the cup as a little guy. Like, I admire all of that shit about point guards more so than anybody else on the floor because they got to be leaders. They got to defend the hardest position. They got to make sure everybody getting their shots. So, like, I just have major respect for guards. Tell me who are some of the best teammates you ever played with. Besides Matt, of course. <laughs> now, we only got three months. The yeah. fucked up thing about it, not to cut you off, the fucked up part about it is, so I go to Golden State, I'm in the boogie shit, and they trade boogie. I think we're going to make the playoffs, play the Warriors, probably get smacked, but we putting Sacramento back on the map. Yeah. They trade boogie. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm old. I got I to gotta make a move. So I'm talking to Draymond every single day. I'm talking to Clay, Steph. They're talking to Bob. We want to, but we might need another point guard, so it's back and forth. They, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, I'm fucking around working out with my kids, and we go to KFC. And Steve hits me like, oh, man, we just lost Ke we lost Kevin tonight. Uh, we we need you, you know. So I come in, they plug me in. This is what you made fun of me with the Steph shit when I mm -hmm. you know slip. But I, I come in, I, I I play 25 minutes my first game. We rolling. His first game back, like I almost break my ankle and I'm pretty much done. Yep. So we that never shit, got the man. chance to we, play yeah. together on the floor. And that'd have been a nice, nice combo because we big I'd have been, switch I'd have been like the five in that yeah. group. Me, you, me, you, Draymond, Steph, Steph and Clay. Clay. And y'all wouldn't have to teach him how y'all play. He used to it. Yeah, yeah. that's the, 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 the <laughs> selfish. We felt like him and, him and Andre were like, I wouldn't say like, we interchangeable. It's like, shit, we, it's two different dynamics. We can get Andre that can kind of mm -hmm. like be that athletic fly, make the passes, and, and also switch everything. And then Matt was like more the of a standstill, yeah. toughness, rebound, get you yeah. 10 bounds, and hit the three. And I felt like, fuck, we really about to sweep mm -hmm. through all of this shit. And then I got hurt. Then you fucked your shit bad. bad. I I was, and I never, like I tell people, only time I missed was when I get suspended. Like, I'm going into the playoffs. I got a chance to win a ring. Finally, I know my career's coming. You know, uh, I'm on my back nine. 
and KD's back, so I'm juiced. I come out, hit my first th two threes, and I then I go up and I land on someone's ankle, bro. And I tell you, my ankle exploded. So I see how to, you you ran back to the locker room. I was like, damn. I, I I tried my hardest too. I was smoking so much weed, hoping that that shit would make my shit go down, icing it, rehab. Like I gotta get back out there for these dudes, and I could just never get healthy. And then once I'm feeling somewhat okay. These motherfuckers are 8-0 already. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm smart enough to know, like, you don't disrupt that flow and give a fuck who you are. Yeah. So I'm just over here running, getting ready in case something happens, staying in shape, being a vet, talking to Clay, talking to dudes when they need to talk, lean on me, whatever. And I just had to, you know, take it as a fan. So that's almost why, like, I, when I tell people, like, that shit was given, I don't really count it. You know what I mean? Like, that shit was a freebie. I said I had the best motherfucking seats. Yeah, and I watched these experience. boys, but the, 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 oh, that man. was the best part. Yeah. The kid, man. Oh, the twins. Man, they was hanging what? everywhere. I mean, they was having shootouts with this dude in yeah. the Western Conference Finals in practice. You know what I mean? And hanging with Steph and Clay and on the plane in the hotel. And you can't replace that shit. That shit was a real family vibe. Which it was man. dope, man. That shit was like... It's different. Eric Housen, as y'all know. Oh, e, that's come on, guy. man. We knew E back when he used Call to sleep e in right the cooker room, need, bro. Jack? E is the gr greatest, dude the ever. greatest dude ever. All time. He's the reason why the Warriors are the Warriors, in my opinion. Just I like agree. that, that atmosphere. Process of the grind. everything together, man. Like... He makes sure everybody's straight, your family's straight. Like, that's what that shit is about. His, jersey, his name and jersey definitely, definitely come on. going up. Got you got to get a street somewhere or All something. That. That's how Facts. big he is to the Shout world. out E, man. Yeah, Shout dude. out E. But back to, uh, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but uh, best hmm. teammates. I had, I, had, I had so many, man. Fuck. I mean. No coin cookie, boy. My brother to the death <laughs> of me. So happy for him. But, you know, you shit. Man, that whole Warriors mob, my Thunder teams, that any team that you have a run with. You fuck with. You life. fuck with, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Especially if you go past, if you go to second round, like, not just the first round run. You go to second shit. round. We only shit. made it to the first, but you couldn't tell us. shit, we won right? a championship after the first round. <laughs> Man, but y'all went <laughs> to the second round, though. That's we went to the second round, but we won a championship after the game. If you lose in that first right. round, it's just like, it's right, that's whatever. just an extra You made week. it, right. But like, if you got two, three weeks out of the you season, you prolonged summer. You fuck with everybody on that team. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you go to a uh, chip run like you've been yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And like we was on, like you fuck with everybody on that mob. So just shit, just about everybody. It's like only a couple people that I just was like didn't care too much about. But like I always respected them. But shit, I, I don't want to just name All names. Of them. Yeah, it I was a good run, hell of a run. I like shit. that. Talk to me about because you're someone you and, and your man Rich. Shout out Rich. Rich is back here. You guys know him. Rich. The other side of the game, like you are really taking advantage of business. And yeah. I think that might have started, I mean, obviously you guys have a great team, but you know, that's one of the main reasons, you know, the Bay Area is what it yeah. is, that and then well, what you're doing in film and everything. Well, that, I mean. I got tired of motherfuckers talking about me. I'm asking for, I got tired of motherfuckers saying shit about me, so I created my own shit, ballroom ETC and other shit, just so I could create my own. <laughs> PG County, was, PG yeah, County coming PG out. PG County, all that, to tell y'all what's really going on, so y'all can stop making up shit. Definitely. I mean, that's really what it is. We're going to have some shit that we own, that's something that I can eventually, you know, do when I'm done playing. Like, you know, tell stories how we wanted to tell them, give people our perspective on shit. There's so many platforms out nowadays, and, you know, you want to figure out ways to separate yourself and make cool content. And we came up with the boardroom. We got PG County docs. We doing shows for Apple. I mean, I could go down the line on shit that we want to do and that we did, but, like, you know, but the course that we refurbished and the communities that we help, I think that's really what it's about for us alongside of, obviously, the cool content mm -hmm. shit that we do and the platforms that we created. Just the impact that we have on these communities that I play in and that I lived in around these times is probably the most impactful thing that we can do. Yeah, that, that training camp you had behind the walls and working with them guys hooping yeah, and stuff, so that's... That's, it, it don't get no deeper than that. No. When you come from that, and you know we got so many yeah. people behind the walls that'll yeah. never get that experience. That's a, the Warriors did a good. They do a great job with that. You know, they go to San Quentin every every mm -hmm. uh, to start of every season. Jack, clip your jewelry, man. It's not shining the right way. Bing. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Appreciate you, you my yeah, guy. So I went, I went with them that one time, and then we did the doc on it. We did the doc on for uh, FS1 um, called Q Ball about Q -ball. Yeah. Uh, San Quentin, and that shit. Dope. Mm, man, down. you know how the game just bring everybody together. So just speak on that more so than anything was dope. So many, Shout out so many guys back in the jail that need that could have been in the league. Oh, there's no bro. question. I'm shout sure. out. Yeah. PG County, you're doing with Showtime, right? Yeah. So we got to yeah, shout yeah, out yeah, PG yeah. County. Dot yeah, coming man. soon. You know. Shameless plug. <laughs> trying to get that money. Yes, sir. Um, but actually, 
Morgan Wooten passes. Mm. You know, uh, talk about that. Man, that's that's tough. You know, the basketball community, just, I mean, forget the basketball, the community in general has so much love and respect for Morgan Wooten and what he's done for so many young, young black men in our area. Not just black men, but just men in general. And, you know, helping them get to college and just turning their lives around through the game of basketball. He Im impacted so many generations of people, you know, and to hear about him passing uh, was definitely tough, you know, because, like I said, that's all I knew about. That's who all the players coming up wanted to play for was Morgan Wooten and go to DeMatha. So his legacy is going to live forever through his players, through his memories, through his family. And he is part of the basketball community, a huge part of the community forever. I'm sure a Hall of Famer. You've invested in some dope tech communities, uh, Coinbase, uh, Master and Dynamics. You have, you know, a, a lot of different stuff going on. Where did the hunger for, for tech come in? I mean, just always seeing, you know, it start from getting the newest video games to getting the newest gadgets to getting to cell phones, to, you know, just progressing over time. You know, our life is basically run off of these things. And, you know, so to get an up-close and personal look on how this stuff is created and, and, and the work and the time that it takes to create these things, I think that was interesting. And moving to the Bay Area kind of gave me a real in-depth look on what this really is about. And we just started building relationships and then went from there and, and, and attaching ourselves to, the, to, to companies that are real authentic to what I do as well and what we do at 35 Ventures. So it just... Being in that, being playing for the Warriors, winning basketball games, and having those people at our game crazy, is pretty right? easy. <laughs> crazy to build those relationships. Plug the plug. Talk to me about your your brother Rich, the the partnership and love you guys have for each other, but also the friendship and and, and what he has meant to to your uh, off the court movement and success. Man, it meant a lot, you know. So when I went over to, I had three agents, two agents before the time I was with Palinka and uh, Aaron Goodwin two great agents over time, and I just wanted to change, and I went over to Rock Nation, and Rich was the first guy to greet me and kind of take over what I was doing. And we just built that relationship over time, and we had conversations over time about what it would look like if we started something together, and we just did it. We just went and did it, and, you know, with the blessing and the, the, from everybody that we worked with before and, you know, having that kind of like that teaching from what Rich had at Rock Nation and learning the business and learning just lifestyle in general, entertainment business, sports, loving sports. How they all intersect. Yeah, just how they all intersect. As somebody that was so well-versed in everything, well-rounded in everything, I wanted to, to be a part of what I did. So it was just, it made sense at the time. What does the advancement in, in, in mental health in this era um, that players are more susceptible to talking about it mean to you? I feel like every player wants to give a deeper perspective on what they go through as, as just men in general, and especially in this life, in this profession. And it's a lot of mental uh, hurdles and obstacles that you got to run through in order for you to reach your highest peak as an individual. So whether it's the great times and whether it's like the low points in your life, I feel like just hearing that perspective is only going to help others. And, and to have the courage to talk about it in front of people is a... Is a it's something I enjoy seeing from my peers. And the judgment, there's no judgment from anybody. It's real open, dope dialogue when it comes to it. And I think it's a perfect time for it. What does it do to your psyche or, or your mental approach when you hear people talk crazy to you? Disrespectful, negative, like what does that do? I mean, to, to be who you are, like we talked about earlier, people think you just turn your back. You choose not to, which I respect. But what does it do to you when you just always hear? Because people don't really know you. Yeah. They know the player and that's what they don't like. So yeah. to be able to separate the player and the person, what does it mean to you as the person when if they knew you, they would really fuck with you, but they don't, they know the player, so they yeah. want to hate on you? It just all depends on the environment, you know? If I'm out on the street, I don't, nobody's ever walked up to me and disrespect me. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Ever. Right. Not like that. Right. <laughs> and ain't nobody happen. coming up to me and calling me no bitch in my face mm -hmm. or saying anything disrespectful to anybody I'm with because I don't give off that energy, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't come off as if I'm bigger than life or, you know, you owe me anything, so... I don't get that in person, but on the internet, it's different. <laughs> you know, you're going to get all types of shit on the internet, and that is what it is. It's fun. Everybody uses that that that, that place to kind of get off that anger that they always had, you know, mm -hmm. and which they would never say in person. Ever. So it's like, I, I get what you're using it for, but at games, when fans heckle me and talk shit about me and call me all types of names and tell me I got the worst hair in the league, <laughs> <laughs> that shit powers me up.
it makes me feel like I'm the best player in the world because you come here to talk shit to me, I always, uh, I obviously made you feel away. Mm -hmm. Right, there's only a reason. There's only a reason. So, you know, it just powers me up to another level. It charges me up. I like it. I enjoy it. I actually encourage it. I got some, uh, <laughs> I got some, talking about your hair, I got some men's grooming products with some dope <laughs> shit that Jack just, fucks with some of it. I'm just going to go ahead and get the, that the, Dion. The, the, so Dion, uh, whoever, Dion, whoever did your Dion, shit, yeah. back. Yeah, he all the way <laughs> live. Okay, no bullshit. He all the way live. I'm telling you. Is LeBron going to make the transformation? What's he going to do? Is he going to... I think he Come home. I, I it, think it's kind of too late because he already got the back nine. The back nine he is leaving? He got the swimming pool in the backyard, so that's already there. How can you cover that? So is he just Artificial has to turf? Just, just, just come home and go bald with it? I'm just saying. I think eventually, Eric, I think eventually dude's going to go bald. I think that's he'll go tough. bald. I think that's the best bet. I think I'd be fucked up if I had to go bald. Because the world and seen the headband God. push, you know what I'm saying? The world and seen the headband push that line back. The whole little convert, the whole little apartment Ain't was no coming, coming off. back. Yeah, you it wasn't glued down together that night. He make it work. He make it work though. Okay. Yeah, he, he make that thing with no headband. You got to keep the headband away. The headband is yeah, too. The headband uh, fucked like, up. You know what I mean? It's it, too it, tough it on the line. It. it exposed him. Yeah, that shit is tough. Shit right, is he, tough. Made, he make that thing work. He though. definitely make it work. You it got work. that's 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 Brian. That's the king. Do what he wants. Definitely. When you hear people talk about, because to me at one point playing against you, playing with you. It wasn't taken away from LeBron's greatness and his tracker, what he's accomplished throughout his career and what he continued to accomplish. At the current time, you were the best player in the world. Did you ever feel that way? I felt I'm unstoppable taking, for sure. Taking long for you to answer that. No, man. I felt unstoppable because I don't really look at it as like I'm better than anybody. I ain't trying to look at it that way. Because okay, I respect that. Everybody brings something unique and different to the table and the circumstances and situations is different. Like, you know, you never know. You never know how dudes, how good dudes would be in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So I know I got a lot of talent, and I know I can do everything on the court, and I know I can play any role at an efficient and elite level. Whatever that puts me, that's whatever it is. I'm sure any coach or any GM would love my talents on their team. <laughs> right. Shit. So, like, whatever that, wherever that puts me, man, <laughs> you know if, what I mean? So that's how I looked at it. If that had been me to make that three in, in uh, Cleveland in the finals to, to win the championship. Hold up. Fuck your mama, everybody, every, oh, Lord. I don't know what I would have done. Man. I don't know what I would have done made that a big shot like that. You like, bitch you. I'm the best in the world, and this is why. I would have told everybody. Like, I would have lost it. Man, I felt like I felt you had like, to feel some of that inside. Man. I felt that I felt I felt that like that that shot gonna always be oh, they're gonna rewind that. Remember, yes sir, yes sir. They're, they're always gonna, gonna, gonna rewind remember that, that back. Shit. And if they don't, I'm sure everybody in the Bay Area is, and that's good enough for me. But you hit that same shot when you came back in the finals this year, top of the key, that same walk up three. Oh yeah, yeah, that next season. That, that boy same came walk in up cooking three. too. Same walk up three. Boy yeah. came in cooking. I was scared though, cause I was in Hawaii watching you. I remember one time you got fouled, but you took someone off the dribble. Like, no, Katie, just stay out on the three point line and just shoot these motherfucking eyeballs out for the rest of the oh, time. Oh yeah, yeah, you talk about this last finals. Yeah, yeah. and I when was, you took, if someone yeah. fouled you, then, then they stopped and I just yeah. like, ah, oh, nah. And it's hard, you know, man. Shit, yeah. You get into that zone, it's you, you, hard for you to come like. On, man. It's hard for so me. So used to doing something. Yeah, I can't like, I can't. You gotta go 100. Gotta go 100. Yeah. You gotta go Got to. And I was like, I felt good enough to go 100. And it was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you need some rest right now. Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> it looked good as fuck, bro. Yeah. I can't. I yeah. know you was like the first three that went in. <sighs> and my whole thing is like, I, I, I like having those moments where people going to always be like, damn, those 11 minutes, though, those 12 minutes, yes, bro. that boy was yeah. on something. Yes, and I, I like having that little feeling, man, because that's what the game is about. That's dope. Top five artists. Come on. I mean, I'm just going to say Drake is creeping up to be the greatest. Of all time? Yeah. You can't fight that? Yeah. He's, that's, that's the only thing I'll say. <laughs> is there anyone else in the category? Jay Z is gonna be hard to. It's, it's always hard to compete against Jay Z. To dethrone him. He didn't. He didn't opened up so many lanes and doors for everybody in this music shit. But when I listen to music and listen to Drake, it's just hard to deny what he got to say. We could talk about music all oh, fuck. Like I feel like Wayne is a goat when we talking about yes, this. Yes, he, he like, had touched yes. the status already. It's the lane that he created for these dudes is the only reason why a lot of these play, these rappers is in the game. Yep. Young Thug, same way. Future, the same way. Hove, the same way. Yep. Like Drake, I feel like they all on that same plane. Opening exactly. like, doors. Like, all different they, styles are opening yeah. doors for everybody. They yeah. feel, I feel like they 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 unlock so many different genres within hip hop. It's not just one thing now. Like I right. feel like it's all different types of hip hop, different lanes that they opened up, and so many other kids got these opportunities now to change their lives off of it. So like, it's hard for me to name a few artists, but like, you like NBA YoungBoy? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's all I listen Boy, to. Boy, he go hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, Kodak Black, he, yeah. the, he the Kodak Animal. Black is, he one of the ones for me. Gunna. Yes. Like, they, they one of those ones where I can listen to all day, every day and really, really respect them like they OGs in the game. Like, them dudes young, but they really, they get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The baby, I like yeah. it. You go hard. If you could have one, like, song that you walk out to, what would that be? Of all time? Mm-hmm. Damn. Damn. That's tough. What's your Rocky music? What's your Rocky thing? That's tough. I'm gonna have to go. It's got to be Jay Z. It's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be public service announcement. Jay Z. Mm. It's gonna. It's gonna have to be a Wayne. It, ah, fuck, man. <laughs> That's tough. Mm. <laughs> That's tough. I'm gonna have. To, I'm gonna go with public service announcement then. It's what would just, yours be? Yeah. Some pop shit. Some pop shit. Yeah. Anything pop. Pop. Just hardcore pop. Hardcore. Yeah, some, some from you think like Pac his, is the greatest. Uh, yeah, to me he is because I think he had uh, he had a song for every mood that we he, we naturally go through. Mm -hmm. Whether you're black, white, male, female, like there's love, there's anger, there's happiness, there's kill, there's all the emotions we go through. That motherfucker had a hit for all of them. True. You know what yeah, I mean? And true. to be so young and so far ahead of his time as far as vision. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, and, and seeing what the world can be, but then in 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 similar ways, like he's speaking his mind against the bullshit he's seen. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. to me, he had like black protest <clears throat> music on top of like he was raised, music, yeah, street shit like yeah. he had love. Of, you yeah, know what I mean, like, babies. Touched everything. Like you he know what I mean. So, so to me, that's why he's my go-to. Um, you've been name drop, Jake. Excuse me, Drake, J Cole, Jay Z, to name a few. What was your favorite song your name was dropped in? Probably that Western Road flows that Drake. Shout out to KD, we relate, we get the same attention. Like, mm -hmm. And that was back then, before I was getting even as much attention as I was. That was, that was like, OKC, right? Yeah, that was mm -hmm. like when I was just a... Uh, That's when me and you was doing songs. <laughs> <laughs> we got a song. Y'all yeah. rap together, right? Yeah, man, we got to get back in. But yes, sir. I'm, I seen the joint you dropped on a little snippet you dropped. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I replay that joint back. Hold it tight, hold it tight. That was hard. <laughs> but nah, that, that Drake was... Uh, that was probably the best one. He was really, really flowing on that on that record. But you know, shit. Any time, any rapper, any artist can think about me while they par going through their process. I appreciate that. Was, that was, but just how you word played that shit yeah, was crazy. Man. He slick yeah, as fuck man. with it. <laughs> it was I crazy. fuck with Drake. Had That's how you really know you kind of made it though. <laughs> he talented, bro. When you yeah. cross over to the entertainment side when people, you know, putting your name in raps and raps in in their art, that shit yeah. is amazing. I appreciate it. So it's just dope. If you could have played in another era of basketball, 70s, 80s, 90s, what would it be and why? I, I would want to see MJ oh. in his heyday. Like, You want to get looked at by MJ? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I want to. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I mean, because he wouldn't, at that time, he, didn't, he wouldn't have played against a, 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 a guy my length. On a, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And actually shoot as well. And get to the and they could score, you know what I'm saying? So I, I felt like that had been a fun matchup, and it had been tough to fucking. MJ was he the greatest man, yeah. And just to be on the court and and, and just soak up that greatness and compete against that, that'd have been like some. Imagine KD with Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. Yeah. That'd have been the toughest Ooh, series for them boys. That would have been a ring. That'd have been a tough. That would have been a ring. You put KD on that team. That would have been a ring. See, that's when I started looking at myself. A little different now. I was like, hold up, so if I I could I could start on that team for the Sonics, like no I could start on a couple teams back in the nineties. Uh, I feel like my game is trying can translate, you know, through errors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how I start. You know, look at myself a little different after that. That's you know dope. What I'm saying? That's big. If you could pick four other legends to hoop with you at the park, you're in. Who are your other four? Shaq, mm. MJ, Kobe. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, ain't nobody else showing up to and, that park. And the cameraman, one of the cameramen, don't fucking, it don't ain't matter. Ain't nobody else showing up to that park, bro. Y'all gonna be, ain't nobody else showing up. Who's there. your fifth? Fuck. Mm. My fifth, my fifth gotta be probably, probably T Mac. Mm. Probably T Mac. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, I say we just play, I just say we play two on twos. And then add another guy, maybe three on threes. But that team couldn't play against nobody. That yeah, Chico. Man, no way. Best player you've ever played with? 
We played with some motherfuckers too, yeah, boy. Yeah. <clears throat> you ain't played with Kyrie yet, so nah, he ain't, so, I ain't putting. Nah, I but he's put not Kyrie. in the conversation. Nah, he can't be. I ain't played with him. Yeah, you ain't played with him yet. It's a tie between Steph and Russ. Mm. It's got to be two killers. What? Two completely different styles. I say, two I, game changers. Yeah, because Russ, I never feared, I never ever feared that he was gonna he was gonna lose a matchup. I never come into the game was like, oh, Russ just can't handle this guy tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's one That's thing I crazy. never worried about. And it's like, as a leader of a team, you worry about so much shit coming into a game. It's like, is Andre gonna be able to knock down a shot tonight? Mm -hmm. Is he gonna be aggressive? Are we gonna shoot with confidence? Is Serge gonna shoot with confidence? Are they gonna be into it? Are they gonna make sure they locking in on their matchup? So much to the point you forget about yourself sometimes. And one thing I didn't ever have to worry about was Russ. And having that comfort and having that type of, like, uh, just knowing I can have that ease coming into the game from the point guard. Got somebody to rely on. Yeah, it was just like made my life easier. And I felt the same way with Steph. You know what I'm saying? Because like I know for a fact that no point guard want to guard him because he ain't going to stop moving. So that's going to take a little bit of energy from him. Uh, and he going to play with that dog where it's like he trying to destroy you when he mm -hmm. was scoring. You know what I'm saying? And our game plan was to get him open at all times and he's not going to stop. And so I can rely. When you can rely on people, him, Damn, I forget. and Clay too. I got to put Clay in there with them too. They all win. <laughs> they, they all, all the same. Oh, yeah. yeah, they Clay got the dog. Killer. Clay got the dog. Like mm. authentically, he's authentic dog. Like nose roll. I'm gonna knock down this tray ball. I'm gonna get to the cup hand there, but I'm locking up Strapping the Clay up. in front yeah. of him. Yeah. And like those three, is a tie between those three. My favorites. That's dope. Yeah, they they made my life way easier mentally. Dope. Last question, Jack and I are people who use cannabis during our career and really try to advocate for it now. We feel like if it's used correctly, it could be very beneficial yeah. for athletes in today's game. Um, I know you feel similar with that. You've invested in a cannabis company. Tell me what you think about the nature of cannabis and how professional sports can implement it into bettering their athletes in recovery. Uh, well, I just think it should be taken off the bad substance list. And if, you know, you don't have to implemented in anything. It's, it's one of those plants that if it's an acquired taste, like if you love it, you love it. If you don't, you're not even going to pick it up. So right. like, it shouldn't even be a, dis a discussion nowadays. It's just like marijuana is marijuana. It, it's not harmful to anybody. It's only, it only can help and enhance and, and do good things. You know, I feel like it shouldn't even be a huge topic around it anymore. Like, is it great? Is it good for you? Can it help? Is it bad? But when everybody on my team drinks coffee every day, Right, you know, right. and taking caffeine every day, or guys go out to have wine after games, or have a little drink here and there. It's like marijuana should be in that tone. Like, what, why are we even talking about it? It shouldn't even be a conversation now. So hopefully we can get past that and the stigma around it, and know that it's done nothing but it, make people have a good make time. Make people have a good time. Make people hungry. Make people just come together. That yeah. plant brings us all together. Focus, so, man, relaxation. Yeah, we good job, baseball. Great job. Great yeah. job, baseball. MLB, Great job. we, we start getting guys. people out of jail for, for marijuana. Facts. That can be. That's the next step, and we just keep going. But it's a plant that's put here for a reason, and it's to all bring us together, man. Hopefully, it, it happens, especially in the NBA. Right. KD, we appreciate you, my brother. No, bro. sir, Thank you for taking sir, some time. Sir. We missed okay. the Megan segment, so I need some shoes, dog. Oh, no, we got to get back online. Oh, no, we're not we done yet. Real quick, yeah, be quiet. And, and blame him, because he posted yeah. all them shits on his page. Okay, oh, here shit. we go. Blame him, blame him. So he this is a, a special segment, KD, we like to call Jack's a motherfucking banger, but it's working out well. Jack, what do you need from KD? Shoes. The shoes. Which ones? All of them. All of them. Your yeah, boy, I've been posting them. You got some new kicks out. Just and, all of them. But this, my son, you know, you sent my son some last ones. I appreciate that. He brought them to my attention. You got some new ones out. <laughs> so just so happened, I follow your boy. It's a lot of colors going on. You even got inspired by a, a pair. Damn. I'm on all of them. Me and my son need them. It's the biggest segment. And uh, I'm just going to tell Rich, because he's behind the camera, my, my, my twin to AU team needs a new shipment of KD's. Rich, yes. appreciate you. Appreciate uh, you, KD. We, we need those. Maybe a couple colors, because we're nice as fuck, by the way. Yeah, they're pretty good. They G1 again. Elite, yeah, we nice, yeah. Again. We just won the MLK tournament a couple weeks ago, man. We going, yeah, we, we doing it. But anyway, man, KD, we appreciate you. Jack needs some shoes. What kind of, what size? What size? 14. 14s. Yeah. Man, that's a wrap, episode 14. You can catch us on Showtime, basketball, YouTube, or all platform streaming podcasts. All of them. 2020 Takeover. All the smoke. You bitch, you. <laughs>